Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Wazoo here and this is another cool video on using Java Spring Boot with React 18. That's right, we're going to be using a Re uh, Java Spring Boot backend to house our data and controllers and then we're going to be pumping data out to the front end and drawing with some React, some little React components. So as with some of my other videos, which you may or may not have seen, let's go ahead and keep pass things over to a demo. Yoink. And then let's walk through and display what we're going to be seeing. So as you can see in front of me, we've got a project list, which is a uh, table laid out with uh, some preliminary data here. I've got some seed data of Project Voyager and Project Deep Space Nine with a description of each of exploring the Gamma Quadrant and establishing security around Bajor. And believe it or not, these are all rendered in React components. That's right. I think this will be really cool. All right. Well, let's get settled. We'll sit down and uh, get, your, get your favorite editor up and running and let's get going and Let's start coding. All right. So as with our other projects that we've started up, we are going to be going to start.spring.io and let's go ahead and create a new Java Spring Boot project. We'll be choosing a Maven Java version 2.72. Uh, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just calling it a Spring Boot React, eight, oops, not 19 yet, 18 demo. And then we're going to keep it a jar file. We are going to be using Java 18. And for dependencies, we're going to be using the dev tools and Lombok and web and data and h2 and time leaf. If I can spell that or say that correctly, it's just a hard one to say time leaf, time leaf. Who knows? And I believe that is all we're going to need. So smack that generate button, download the zip, and extract it to your favorite place on the hard drive. So as you can see, I've got the project opened up and running in my IntelliJ editor. And let's go ahead and start adding some code. But first things first. Zoom. Let's hide my beautiful face just to make sure that nothing gets blocked on your end. Okay. So first, let's open things up. Um, if you've, it, before I mention it, the source code and uh, chapter settings are going to be in the description and the timeline down below. So feel free to zoom around the video to uh, find the, the right chapter that you're looking for. You may have gone through some of my other videos before and you are more than familiar or more than comfortable with setting up either React or Java Spring Boot and wanted and would rather focus on the other. So be sure to use those chapter settings to do that. And yeah, let's get going. So first things first, what I usually like to do is set up our database properties in the application.properties file. So let's go ahead and load that up. And we are going to basically just cut, cut and paste the H2 settings that I've been using in every project so far. And I will paste them here and we will go through them just in case you haven't done them before. Uh, so we're these are the, the main ones up here. So spring data source URL, we're gonna be uh, creating a file database in the data folder just called demo. And then we're providing a driver class name of org.h2.driver, a username and password of admin password. Uh, that'll be for the H2 console, which I'll show you once we get some uh, data showing up in the database. Uh, then we're selecting, or we're defining, sorry, we're defining the database platform as well as our H2 console settings. So that's pretty much all, we, all we're gonna need to do. And uh, let's go ahead and start this up. And what we should expect to see happening is everything gets started up correctly after a preliminary build. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go through the output here. 
okay, so it looks like the H2 console has started up at H2 console with our database available on uh, slash data slash demo. So we won't open it just yet. Uh, there's really nothing to see there just now. So let's go ahead and stop this. And then what we are going to do is we are going to create a project model. And it will be a simple uh, simple model here for um, just storing our project information. So let's go ahead and we'll create a new package in the com example spring boot react 18 demo folder and we'll just call it models and I'm going to create a new Java class and just call it project. Okay, and we're going to give it the annotation of entity for our uh, persistent settings and then getter, I'll be using the getter and setter um, annotations from Lombok. And this this way, if you're not familiar with Lombok, it will automatically generate getter and setter functions for all of the private member variables of your class, which is really handy. It keeps everything looking clean. So we'll create a uh, ID property here. So we'll use the ampersand at ID and at generated value annotations. And we'll specify long of ID. And then we'll be doing a uh, private string name for a project name, and then maybe a private string description. And let's implement serializable here. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Okay, all that looks good so far. And then we're going to override the two string method just so we can verify uh, what our project looks like from time to time. So public string, and we're going to return a project and ID equals ID and name equals name plus, oops, plus end string plus description equals description plus the end quote there, and then that looks like we are it. All right, that is the world's fastest entity creation ever. And now let's go ahead and create a repository for it because we know we're gonna need one. So let's create a new package, just call it repositories for the folder, and then a project repository. And this will be an interface. Okay, and we'll be using a repository annotation and we'll be implementing implements crud repository using uh, project and long. So let's pull these in there, import class. Okay, and so far everything is, oops, uh, what have I got here? Oh, I'm sorry, extends. Simple mistake, okay. So far, so good. Now let's create a database seeder. Let's just create a new folder here called config and let's create a database loader and this will just um, give our our database some preliminary data. Uh, we've We've used it before in some of our in some of my other videos, uh, so this is kind of no different. We're going to be implementing uh, the command line runner just to make sure that this executes after everything in the server finishes uh, spinning up. Okay, so we'll go. We'll use the auto wired annotation. We'll pull in the project repository and dunk. Doink, doink. Okay, and then we'll be overriding the run method, which takes in some string arguments, throws an exception if anything goes wrong. If I could spell type correctly, that would be great. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two projects. So project, project equals you know what, I'll just call it A. 
new project and let's import the class just so that we can set name of you know what, I'll just call it Voyager and set description of exploring the gamma quadrant okay and then repository save a and then project b equals new project and b dot set name and we'll call this one deep space nine and we'll set a description for this one of what did I have in the demo? Establish security, planet security around Bajor. Okay, hopefully I spelled that right. And then repository, save B. All right, so we've got two records in the database, hopefully when things start up. So let's go ahead and start up the server and let's make sure that our records get added. Okay, there's no errors so far, which is great. We've got a um, no errors on the startup. And let's go ahead and let's quickly write a controller here. And we're going to need it anyway for um, extracting all the models from our database. So let's, in the, in the root folder, let's create a new package. Um, and we'll just call it controllers. And let's go ahead and we will create a project controller. And all this is going to do is fetch all of the records, all of the project records in our database. Okay, so we're going to annotate it with a REST controller, and we'll be using a request mapping of API slash projects. Okay, and then we're going to be pulling in the project, whoops, project repository, repository. Let's finish resolving all of these reds. Okay. And then let's define our base get mapping and public iterable project get all. And we want to return repository find all. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and restart this. And then on the command line, we are going to be doing a curl command to just verify that our C data and our records and everything is set up correctly. So let's go ahead and into our, you know what, I'll pull up a terminal preview. I think I was able to blow up the size of it. Okay, there we go. So let's see. Let's see. I'll do a curl and then HTTP localhost 8080 slash API projects. All right. And as you can see, we've got our two records in there. We've got our Voyager, V'ger, exploring the Gamma Quadrant and Deep Space Nine establish the planet security around Bajor. Okay. Pretty sweet. Okay. So now what we're going to do we have our sort of API up and running. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a basic controller to just redirect everyone to the home page of our app. So we can call this one home controller. And it is a simple controller using the controller annotation. And we are going to define a get mapping of slash. We are going to define the get mapping of slash, and then we are going to just return a string index return index. And if you recall from some of my other projects, that means that in our slash, or not slash, that means in our source main resources templates folder, we're going to have to add an index.html. Okay. And so what we're going to do is, 
I'll cut and paste in the body of what we normally do. So I normally, um, as with every HTML document, we put in our doc type, and then we define the thyme leaf namespace up in our HTML element header. And then we've got our head section and then in our body. And what I'm gonna be doing is we are gonna be creating a div with an ID of root. And this will be where we inject our React uh, components. So we've got a simple uh, application here. Oh yeah, and we need to define a script source equals bundle.js. And that'll be the JavaScript React application that we pull in into this page. So uh, just to make sure that things are starting, let's just go ahead and give ourselves a title of yo. And let's start things up. And then let's go ahead and visit our homepage at localhost 8080. And we see yo. All right. So far we're really cooking, okay. So let's go back to our, let's go back to our application here. Let's remove the yo, yo, yow. And we are done with our Java Spring Boot side. So we've got all the components that we need. We've got our uh, our models set up, our controllers to to fetch all the data that that's in our database so far, which consists entirely of two records, and um, a repository as our database interface. So everything looks good on the Spring Boot side. We've confirmed that the records are showing up there when we start up, and that we even visit the home page when we pull it up in our browser. So let's go ahead and go back into our um, terminal window here, console, whatever whatever favorite program you want to use. And then we will go into our folder. You know what? I wonder if I can do it right within... Ugh, it's PowerShell. Okay, maybe not. Let's go... I think there's a way to change that, but I, w I don't want to fiddle with that for now. So let's go... Uh, Spring Boot React 18 demo. Okay, so uh, I keep I keep using LS in Windows, which just never goes very well, right? So what we want to do is uh, the basis of working with JavaScript. Um, if you if you are and are not familiar with it, is using using the Node Package Manager, which is called npm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a empty um, package.json file, which is sort of a node package manager template configuration. And, and then we will install the packages uh, that we're going to be needing and that we'll be using, which will include things like Babel and Webpack. So let's go ahead and type in npm init dash dash y, and it will create a empty package.json for us, which is pretty handy. And then what we are gonna do is we are going to be doing a npm install react and react dom dash dash save. And that will pull, pull down react and react dom for us. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be installing npm install save dev. And then let's go at babel slash core at babel, whoops, slash preset env at babel slash preset react. And then we need the babel loader. We need the CSS loader. Uh, you know what, I'll leave that for now and we'll add that in later when we need it. We need webpack and webpack CLI. And I believe that's everything. So all these are just packages that uh, the the if you're not too familiar with JavaScript, the the npm and package.json file is kind of the equivalent of the pom xml slash maven stuff that comes with uh, Java Spring Boot. So you manage your packages with Spring Boot using Maven and the pom xml, and in on the JavaScript world, you're using things like uh, or you're using npm and the package.json configuration. Okay, so we've got our uh, 
let's see, we'll pull it up up here and hopefully it, where is refresh? Here we go. Okay, so we'll keep our main index the same. Okay, uh, our name is Spring Boot React 18 demo. Um, yep, that's fine. All this stuff is okay. And we just need to create a start script, what's called a start script. So it's sort of like a uh, helper annotation. And uh, what we're going to be doing is running Webpack using dash dash mode equals development. And we're going to be watching. Uh, that way it'll be always running in the background. That way when we uh, make any JavaScript changes, which we'll be doing a lot of, then it'll automatically pick up those changes and uh, recompile what we've been using. And we're, our output path that we're going to be uh, monitoring is our target slash classes slash static folder. And let's start with this. So why were you, why are we, okay, you know what? Uh, so let's take one step back and we will create our, our webpack config file, which is, oh, I don't think we can do touch. Okay, how do we make a file on, I'm always, I'm, I've been really used to using touch, okay. Um, Okay, you know what? Just notepad webpack.config.js in the root of our project. Uh, we won't edit it in notepad, but at least it's created. Okay, so the webpack config.js is the um, is how we're defining our JavaScript bundler. So for a TLDR about bundlers, there's a there's many of them that are sort of on the market now and used by very many projects. There's things like Parcel, there's um, Rollup, and uh, Snowpack. Um, Rome is another one, I believe. Um, Bun. There's quite a few of these kinds, and their only purpose really is to take all of our assets, so all the JavaScript that we've got in our app, and uh, build it and then compress it into a um, into a bundle that our browser our browser can then download and uh, load up and execute. So that's pretty much a, the the main job of all of these bundlers. Now uh, there's a lot of fine hairs between all of them, as you might expect. Some of them try to optimize your bundle sizes. Uh, they try to split it up so that you only download the uh, the chunks or the pieces of the bundle that you need at the time you need it. Uh, but for now, we won't be worrying about any of that. Basically, we just we just want to have our JavaScript, our React JavaScript compiled for us and ready to go uh, for use in our application. Okay, so we are going to be creating a web, we're in the webpack.config file right now. And this is for just uh, specifying where our JavaScript is going to live and where we want it to be uh, built and output to. Maybe that's the easiest way to say this. Okay, so we're defining a path of require path. Um, then we've got const webpack is require webpack. And then we've got const package is require package.json. And then we have to work with module exports. And so the, the first uh, configuration uh, setting that we need to specify in Webpack is called the entry. And this is just basically where is the um, entry point of our JavaScript application. So it's going to be in the source main front end uh, folder. And it's going to be called uh, package main, which if you we're going to be using the main field of our package file, which is index.js. Now we can change that to whatever we want. Uh, I'm just it. It was defined for me when I used npm init dash dash y as index.js, so I thought I would just keep the same thing. And that's all we need for entry. Now for output, again, we have to specify where we want this um, the JavaScript bundle going to, and so we are going to be 
going to the source main resources static folder. And we'll be calling the, the final bundle uh, file name of bundle.js. Okay, and then we've got to set up our rules for uh, working with our JavaScript, our React. So we want to uh, test, and then we've got some regex here of uh, JS or JSX. And then we're gonna exclude anything that's in the node modules folder. And we'll be using the Babel loader. And I think that's all we need to get started. Okay, so basically all this test is doing is uh, when Webpack detects any cha any changes or um, like any, and not sorry, any changes or any actual code in a JS, in a .js or a .jsx file, then it'll run it through the Babel compiler on, the, on its way out to bundle.js, which is exactly what we need to do in order to um, work with any JavaScript, React, or anything otherwise. So back in the root folder, we're done with this config file for now. Back in the root folder, we need to add another file here, and we're going to be calling it uh, babel.babelrc. And this is just a sim another simple configuration file for uh, defining um, those presets that we installed uh, basically just um, uh, what JavaScript default settings and versions we want to support. Um, anyways, you don't really need to know or understand um, how, how the presets work for now. Just We can just cop copy and paste them in. Okay, so now allow, let's go into our uh, project folder here and in the main folder Let's create a new directory called front end. Now you can call it React, you can call it client, you can call it JavaScript, uh, whatever you want. Uh, for now, we're just going to call it front end. Um, if you do change the name, just be sure to update your Babel or your webpack.config to change change the name here. Okay, so in our front end folder, we're going to be creating our. Um, remember, we called an index. Uh, .js file. So let's go ahead and create that. And we need to import React from React and then import star as React DOM from React DOM client. Uh, this is React 18, by the way. And so some of this, some of the React is a little bit uh, different. They've updated it uh, between earlier versions of React. Um, so we'll be trying to use the newest, the newest uh, creation method now, which is uh, uh, using the React, React uh, the React DOM create root, and we're going to use document get element by ID, and then remember we called our root element root, and we are going to render our app component, which we haven't yet created, but we've defined it here as app. So back in our index.html, we remember how we have this div with an ID of root. So again, you can call this whatever you want. You can call it home. You can call it application. And then just make sure back in your uh, React index.js that you've um, updated the, the element name here that we need to use. Okay, so we we're looking to create a app.js component. So in that same folder, let's go ahead and create a app.js file. And then all this is going to do is load up our uh, projects from the back end, from the Spring Boot um, database, Spring Boot application, sorry, Spring Boot server. That's a better way to say it. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, React and then use effect, use state from React. And Okay, so let's see, we've got an app equals, and I'm, okay, so let's slowly build this component out. So we're, uh, all, we're, all we're defining is a application component, which is sort of our main, uh, 
main component that encompasses rendering uh, some child components, which are handle the the project listings uh, that we want to display. So we've got a, a top level app component, and we are going to define a an array here in state called uh, projects and set projects. So use state. Um, is a special hook mechanism with React. And what this will let us do is um, it'll let us store the projects array in sort of state memory of this component. And so whenever this, whenever this uh, state gets updated, it will then trigger a re-render of our application, uh, well, of, of the component. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to return a uh, project list. And this is where we put in some of our HTML here. So let's create a table uh, and a T head section, a TR, and we'll just call it ID. Basically all the column headers, name and TH description. Okay, and then we're, what we're going to do is uh, create a T body, and then we're going to have we're going to create a project list component, and we're going to pass in our projects equals projects. Whoops. Okay, so we've got that set up. So we haven't yet created this project list component, so we're going to need to do that. And remember, up here above, we are using uh, the project state. So um, initially this will be an empty array, but now what we're gonna do is we are gonna fetch our data from the API. And to use that, we're gonna use another React hook called useEffect. And what we're gonna be doing is we're using the, the regular JavaScript fetch API. So we're gonna be using, uh, we're gonna, our destination is API slash projects. And then we're going to be taking the response and we're going to be trying to convert it or call the JSON method to it in the, in the, in the promise. And then finally work with that. Whoops. Work with that to set our project state to be the data result that we're getting from the server. Now, use effect is kind of a neat little um, a neat little hook from React where you can use it to um, uh, if you're familiar with the old Angular JS um, framework JavaScript framework, then it's very similar to a watch a scope dot watch uh, um, uh, feature thing, whatever it was. And so, what we're going to do is. Um, the use effect, you can monitor changes to uh, either any of your state components or state uh, variables, or you can do things like um, if, if we leave it alone as it is right now, by default, then this will run, uh, this will constantly run. Uh, use effect will constant, constantly be called. So what we want to do is, um, or it will be called with every, every uh, render of the component. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, our second parameter here, we want to use an empty uh, dependency list. So an empty um, array. And what this will do is this will make sure that this use effect fires just once when the app component uh, kicks up for the first time. Uh, because all, that's all we want to do is, is we want to make sure that we're only using it once in order to fetch uh, the data that we're looking for. Um, so, uh, but but what we can do in the future, which we won't be covering this video, but what we can do in the future is we can add um, other things here. So let's say let's say we had another uh, something up here. Um, I don't know, foo, and this was also a use state of an empty string. And so in our dependencies down here, if we um, added foo as a dependency, then any time foo the value of foo would be updated. Uh, then it would trigger uh, this API call, it would trigger this use effect to be run again. 
So that's kind of where the value of use effect comes in. So for now, as I said, we're just going to leave it in an empty variable, an empty array, and that way it, it runs once and it pulls down a list of our uh, projects. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a console log right here of our data. Let's just validate that you know this thing is actually up and running and coming together. And okay, so we've got a now we need a project list component which works with our uh, works with our list of projects. Okay, oh yeah, so at the bottom of the file we have to export default app. Make sure we're, expo we're ex exporting this component from this file and we want to import app from app. Booyah. Okay, so now in our front end, we want to create a new file and we'll call it project list. And this is where we define a um, component for working with our project list. And okay, let's call it project list equals. Um, and we'll work, I'll show you the how to pass the data, how to work with the data right after this. And let's export default project list. Okay, so we've passed it a list of, um, we've passed it a list of projects here, right here. So we passed it a list of projects here and what's happening is uh, React when you want to pass in uh, when you want to define and pass in uh, properties into the into the component, it React term calls these things props, and normally they are passed in as a props object, and then with the, these um, values hanging off of that uh, props object. So, in other words, in our project list, notice how we have our projects. Uh, field here with a value of the projects array that we've gotten from our data. So in the project list component, um, if we pull in our props, then our 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 project list will show up as props dot projects. So what we can do is then um, let's work with that. So what we're going to do is return. Let's open a squiggly. So what we're going to do is props.projects and we're going to call the map function and we're going to go through each project that's in the array. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another component, a child subcomponent just called project and it'll be responsible for each rendering each individual project. So ID is project.id, whoops. And then our name is project.name. And then description is project.description. Okay, and then we've got to close off the component. Uh, let's see, close this off. And, oops, close off all the squigglies. Okay, everything looks okay. So all we're doing is we are iterating through our our props projects array, and we're calling the map function, which will um, it'll then go through each item in that array, and then it'll 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 take each each project and run a a function here to create another component which will then we then pass in the properties of each project so the one handy thing with react is that uh, react is smart enough that we can use the the name of the the property directly in the uh, function constructor here so remember how this was props.properties what we can do is instead uh, take this object and reference we can destructure it as projects it's called destructuring, um, and and specify projects directly. So React knows that this object is props and props dot projects, um, 
it's kind of a difficult concept to explain clearly so hopefully that came through okay basically all it means is that we can create a shorthand right up in our uh, function constructor which will let us uh, instead of needing to type props.x props.y throughout the entire component we can just uh, do it right in our constructor there okay so now we're going to need to import project which we haven't created yet from dot project so let's go ahead and create a project.js. Okay, and this is the last component in our tree. Import React from React. And we're gonna be creating a project component. Now remember we passed in the ID, the name, and the description. So we can reference all of those right in the constructor for this component rather than um, calling them props everywhere. Whoops. And this uh, empty angled brackets is what React calls a fragment. So you can also uh, define this as react.fragment. And um, basically it's a way of surrounding. We need to, we need, React wants us to surround um, our components with um, some kind of container um, each time. So we'll, we'll use a, uh, a React fragment, which is the empty squiggly, empty angle bracket, sorry. Uh, and then we are working with a, a TR, a TD of an ID, and then TD of name, and then a cell for description. Okay, I think we have got everything. Wow. And then we want to export default project and let's see do we have everything together I think we have everything together now so we've got it uh, consoling out our data file or our data set uh, once we get it back from the Spring Boot server and then it will render the project list uh, going through the, the array and for each item in the array it will be creating a new project component so let's go ahead and let's start the server. And that should be all up and running okay. And then on the uh, back in our uh, console here, we can just type in npm start. So remember in our uh, package.json, we had a start script. So npm will let us run um, anything that's defined in this scripts object and uh, do the work for us, for, for lack of a better description. Okay, so it uh, behind the scenes, npm start is going to be launching Webpack. It's going to uh, build everything. This it, whenever you see, um, you know, output like this built such and such built successfully, then of course that's kind of the good indication that things were set up and configured correctly. Um, and we're using an output path of target classes.static because when we run the um, IDE debugger uh, through here, it's uh, Spring Boot and the IDE are uh, compiling, are working from everything in the target folder in our project uh, directory. So we're going to be, Webpack will monitor any changes uh, to our JavaScript and then rebuild it for us and restart our uh, thing. So let's go ahead and refresh and we've got nothing showing up. So let's hit F12 and let's see what's happening here. Project list is not defined. Okay, so let's go back and import, ah, of course. Okay, so let's import project list. I meant to do that, that way it'll show you, you'll be able to see firsthand Webpack uh, rebuilding. Okay, so project list. So now we should go back to the browser and restart, or refresh, sorry. And ta-da! We refresh and we see our project list followed by our two components. And then if we look in our JavaScript console, we can see uh, the, the console log output, which is our data coming back from the Spring Boot server. Okay, so just for a special bonus, we are going to be adding some CSS. I know that by tradition, a lot of my applications look terrible and are very programmer art type of look. 
So now we're going to add some uh, basic CSS. And what we need to do is, um, okay, we don't need to stop the server, but we do need to stop. Let's stop the webpack. What we need to do is pull in what's called a uh, CSS loader. And what that is doing is it is uh, telling Webpack what to do with um, any CSS that we come that um, we start start to define in our application. Uh, so let's go ahead and type in npm install uh, dash dash save dev CSS loader and style loader. So it'll do its thing. It'll pull in those packages that we need. And then back in our webpack.config.js, we're going to be adding another rule for CSS files. So let's create a test. And let me pull up the right regex to use. OK, so slash backslash dot CSS. And we are going to be using the style loader and CSS loader. And then what we can do is back in our um, front end project, we can create a new file and just call it style.css. And then in our main application, in our main app.js file at the very top, can be anywhere, it doesn't have to be at the very top, very top, but I usually like to do that, is we can just import style.css. And then what Webpack will do is it'll detect the CSS.CSS import. It'll go to its list of rules defined in the Webpack config, and then it'll run the style loader and CSS loader to uh, compile the CSS and output it into the same output folder that the JavaScript is go going off of. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is let's just define some basic styles for our table. Um, Let's give it a width of 100%. And let's give our TH a background color of sort of a green. So let's call it hashtag 04 AA60. And let's use a white color to print the labels. We'll give each, each thing, each cell, a padding of 10, p 10 pixels. And then for the TD uh, table TD cells, we're going to be using a padding of 10 pixels as well. And then one thing I want to do is uh, create a, a slightly gray background for every uh, even row of our table. So what we can use is some CSS called nth child. So nth child, and we'll be using the even. And we will set a background color of light gray. So we don't have to restart anything. Our, oh, well, OK. We do have to make sure it's started to begin with. And so it's up and running. And then let's go back to our browser and refresh. And ta-da, we have got our nice green, green labeled, green column labeled, uh, gray, alternating gray and white, uh, background row color, uh, project display list. So that's about it for this video. That's all I wanted to tackle during this. Um, I really hoped you enjoyed our adventure as we went through going on Spring Boot and React 18 and set up a basic front end application for us using data delivered from Spring Boot. If you liked what you saw, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below on if this is the kind of thing you want to see more of, if there's a specific uh, technology set you want to work with. Um, I know there's like 100 different frameworks, uh, JavaScript frameworks. So if there's another one I can start using and uh, do a mix of videos around that. Anyways, uh, my name's Wazoo, and thanks for stopping by and really appreciate your support. Thanks, all. Peace.